CES 2010 HD Nation is on the show floor and we've got the scoop for you. 3D HD TV, it's coming in force. 480 hertz, I bet you don't care, but Robert may beg to differ. And the pop box may be the best deal in a set-top box ever. We're going to tell you more about that coming up on HD Nation. This episode of HD Nation is brought to you by Squarespace, Netflix, and GoDaddy.com. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Pappy Norton. And I'm Robert Heron. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD products and content, no matter what your budget is. Whether it's very, very small or very, very big, here at CES 2010, they had something to empty your wallet. Dude, yes. CES! Awesome. We want to thank, hey, we'll take a moment here. We want to thank NBC Universal for letting us use their lights and set. This is really cool. And I got to say, okay, the big HD story here, it's got to be 3D HD TVs. Has to be, definitely. I'd say four manufacturers will likely have HD TV ready televisions in markets in 2010, starting hopefully by about springtime. So, is there going to be a title to watch on these? Uh, well, one Blu ray title has been announced. Monsters vs. Aliens, that was announced recently as probably the first title. It won't be the only title, of course. I think a lot of animation that was originally shot, edited, and produced for 3D mm -hmm. will be some of the initial content that will be released immediately. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Disney has one of the biggest collections of animation out there, and, and the reason animation is going to come out in force on a 3D HD is because they can basically just hit a button and re-render all the computerized animation because, you know, live action it requires two cameras to go stereo but disney's starting out with a christmas carol and it's not going to be out till the end of the year so Ooh, i haven't heard that yeah it's supposed to be a bunch of springtime announcements on new hd discs supposedly avatar which is what has everybody excited about 3d is going to come out as a standard blu-ray and then probably following up with a 3d version oh, later probably on. nothing that definitely will be in a 3d library of somebody's <laughs> here this year you have yeah to believe that. but I, I still believe they're going to release a standard a 2d blu-ray version first i have I, I definitely so okay your money, hands down, who's got the best 3D HDTV right now? Panasonic, without a doubt. Their plasma technology and their latest pixel design, including new phosphors, mm -hmm. that basically make the fastest panel available, and that's really what you need for 3D, is panel speed. The pixels have to update very quickly in order to really deliver a clear image to each eye, because you're effectively doubling the amount of information over 1080. If you're gonna send 1080p to each eye, mm -hmm. you know that's twice as much information to deal with, and you need a panel that can keep up with that. And compared to LCD technology right now, it is good. They LCD mm -hmm. is pretty darn good, like from the top manufacturers like Sharp, uh, not Sharp, but uh, Samsung and LG mm -hmm. both have panels out right now, or will be out later this year. But Panasonic's technology is a leap ahead in terms of just maintaining that performance level you're going to need to minimize errors that can occur. Things like crosstalk between the eyes when, you're, when one eye is being shuttered with a liquid crystal shutter glass. Right and the screen is being updated, you don't want any of that information to bleed between both eyes. Probably a bad boy, choice of words there, but <laughs> if that information starts to cross over in between both eyes, you end up with a blurrier image. Right. And plasma pixel performance with the latest VT25 series that Panasonic's gonna introduce later this year, They've got it, yeah. and it, it, everyone I've talked to seems to believe, and their eyes are telling them, it's the smoothest and the clearest out there right now. It's interesting, I mean, Panasonic is one of the more interesting demos here, which is DirecTV doing 3D HD and an actual live demo. I mean, totally. a live cage demo. It'll be interesting to see no, what it, it looks it like. It is coming and, off a satellite. It is it coming is off a satellite. Big. But you gotta wonder if they're giving it the special bandwidth from DirecTV. A little extra sauce. Samsung LED 9000. Oh. It's, uh. Point three <laughs> inches thin. <laughs> the room and the press really at uh, the press conference for when the TV was unveiled, people were applauding and ooing and aahing. Yeah. And these are these are jaded, basically press cranky, people. jaded, angry people I, who make us look perky. They were they were giddy about this set, and it's going to be their flagship model, incorporating wireless technologies. The thin panel design, of course, is really what makes the stand out. Uh, aluminum frame, right. I believe, a metal, brushed metal frame that looked really beautiful, and just some of the, and of course, 3D ready. But I'm more interested in really the 8000 series, the C8000 series. I mean, is the one we'll be, the be able to afford down. without selling our cars. Exactly. They also have a C8000 or a plasma series in their 8000 as well. That's also 3D ready, and I'll be curious to see how that pits against what Panasonic's doing. But the big news really for me is the integration across lower tiers of models as far as network streaming, video streaming, like Netflix, like your Amazon Video on Demand, Blockbuster, yeah. Vudu, Travel Channel, Vudu. Those are some of the some of the services that you'll be able to download and incorporate into your TV, either through app-like stores. That was another announcement Samsung and other others had, basically creating an app channel or an app store-like environment where you can select what things you want to go into your TV and get rid of things you don't. And I really like that. And be able to 
be able to get that kind of video into your TV directly through the internet connection you already have. Yeah. I, I see the days of cable broadcasting numbered. Let me yeah, put it that say, way. And Voodoo HDX looks amazing. 1080p streaming, it is phenomenal if you have the bandwidth. Sharp added yellow, <laughs> RGB, why? 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 Yellow. Why? Why not? Why do they need to add yellow? I mean, it's an expanded color gamut, but what's going on with that? Is that really going to improve your picture? It will give you a bigger color gamut, but the big, big but is, is all of your current HD content. If you want to display it accurately, you don't need a larger color space. You need a more accurate color space. Mm -hmm. the, the, but for consumer camcorders, they do offer features that allow you to record that video in an expanded color format. Mm -hmm. So for that one particular edge case right there, if you're doing your own home videos, you can take advantage of a TV with an expanded color gamut. However, I see most of the LED backlit TVs can already deliver an expanded color gamut. Some of the inside people I've talked to uh, basically engineers and other folks seem to believe that Sharp had a, a lacking backlight system in their TV <laughs> and the addition of yellow helped them produce better looking picture quality. Now they're claiming it also expands their colors from say a billion to a trillion. More important for me will be will their new series allow you to then incorporate better color control so if you really want an accurate picture you can achieve that with their sets. Okay, the, the other thing that's been bandied about at the show, 480 hertz. Yeah. It's faster. It doesn't exist, people. Let's just get this out of who's, the way right now. Okay, who's claiming 480 hertz? Well, uh, Toshiba Cell TV, which we'll talk about in a second, as well as LG, of course. They are big proponents. And I'm almost certain you'll see TVs from Vizio claiming 480 scenes per second. It's not refresh rate technology. They're not updating the entire screen at right. once in any given second. They're updating about half the screen at once. Again, it's that scanning backlight technology incorporated with at least they're up to true 240 performance now, 240 hertz performance. But now with the addition of the scanning backlight system, they can claim a, a 480 scene per second system. They're not saying hertz directly. They're not saying refresh rate. So you mentioned it just a second ago, Toshiba's cell TV. It's the cell processor. Yeah. It's a TV. Why? What's a cell pro What's a PS3 processor doing in a Toshiba HD TV? Well, the, the cell processor that powers the PS3 was co-developed by IBM, Toshiba, and Sony. So it's about time they actually put this to work. I mean, you can buy a blade server from IBM, but, <laughs> but putting it in a TV, last year they demonstrated this as a prototype doing, say, eight HD streams at once, all being decoded using the power of that processor. They're going to use it for things like 2D to 3D conversion. They're also going to use it for up conversion, cleaning the video. They're basically going to take advantage of something that's roughly, they're claiming, 140 times more powerful than any other CPU in a TV, and using that to make better features and better performance out of it. Other things I liked about that particular cell TV technology they're using, brightness. They're claiming they can put a thousand candela per square meter out wow. of this TV. That's roughly twice as bright as any other That's TV. That's sun territory. That is really, really bright. That's and using it outside in Arizona in the summer territory. Now this is going to be a full backlit LED backlit system. It's not an right. edge lit system. So while it will be very, it would be fairly thin. It'd be under an inch thick, but it's going to have probably the most number of zones in terms of local dimming technology. The local dimming meaning that you can dim the LEDs in a specific area of the screen when you're displaying, say, black, to make the screen look very dark, almost unmeasurable black levels. Mm -hmm. But it's gonna have 512 zones. That's a good 150 more than I've heard from any other manufacturer. This is gonna be a very expensive TV. Other, other features of the cell include a terabyte hard drive built in, built in wireless and networking, it's a do-it-all TV, but you know, no pricing, no availability announced yet. Let's wrap it up. 3D HDTV is coming, probably yeah. enforced by this summer. More titles will be announced this spring. Players are in effect. Players are in effect. We're going to talk more about Blu-ray players here at the show a little bit later on. Um, a lot of gorgeous TVs with big screens are going to be very, very affordable, especially by this summer. Starting out probably with the Vizio 75-inch, which is going to be selling for probably 3400 NBHD compatible. 480 hertz, skip it. It's a waste of your time. Ah. Okay. Okay. Do you see it? I mean, if it's there and it doesn't cost you any more, go for it. Bigger numbers. Marketing people love this kind of stuff, but <laughs> in reality, you know, it's good for all of us to see. I'm more impressed by the streaming technologies coming to less expensive models. Mm -hmm. And two companies have announced Skype technology built into the TV. Uh, LG has an LCD, and Panasonic has a plasma. And of the two I've seen, I really have to nod toward Panasonic as better image quality because they're offering a 720p capable camera right. if your bandwidth supports it you really get a good looking picture. And it comes as close to the experience I get with like a PlayStation 3 and right. the iToy. And being able to like look through your HDTV, it's like a window into somebody else's room if they have a similar setup. 
And because it's Skype, you can use that with computers or phones, or right. a lot of people use that software already. That's going to be a big deal. Even even the lower qual uh, lower quality that I saw at, at LG, it's still it's still I think going to be a very popular. My mom's probably going to have a reason to buy an HD TV so she can video conference with my son. Totally. All right, we're going to be back in just a moment. Ben Draba, Gadget HD is going to talk to us about cable card. Why it may finally be time to build yourself a cable card home theater PC. We're talking four tuners and a network tuner right after this. I want to thank one of the sponsors who made HD Nation and CES possible, Squarespace.com. You can now manage your entire Squarespace website on the go with a new Squarespace iPhone application. Post and edit entries, manage content, save drafts, post photos, and more, all directly from your iPhone. The app has a completely custom user interface developed in-house to match your Squarespace site's look and feel 100%. It's also the only iPhone application on any major publishing platform that contains an iPhone native statistics interface, tightly integrating your phone, your site, and your data. Got more than one website? No problem! Your Accounts tab allows you to manage content for multiple Squarespace sites. You can save a draft post for one site and then easily jump to another site to schedule a post for later in the day. So even if you're not at your desk, you can keep your website up to date if you've got your iPhone. And if you're just starting out with Squarespace, be sure to use the code HDNation when you sign up. You'll get 10% off the lifetime of your order. Please check it out at squarespace.com. CS 2010, Patrick Norton here. We're in the NBC Universal booth. Joining me now, one of my favorite writers in the HD world and GadgetHD.com's contributing editor, Ben Draba, who has forgotten more about home theater PCs than I hope to ever know. Cable car, dude, it's legit. Are you it, excited? It, I, I actually am excited. I've been using it for a few years, and although I realize most people don't because it's so <laughs> expensive and, you know, troublesome, but, I, you know, the new tuners coming out are, are pretty exciting. There's basically, Silicon Dust is doing a network tuner. What's going on with that? Yeah, so Silicon Dust is known for their HD Home Run line of tuners, which is basically, it just sounds just like what, you know, it's, a, you, it's the Ethernet port and a coax input, and then any computer on the network can access the uh, content. So they're basically taking that over to the cable card world. And what's really cool about it, and unique, and seems impossible at the same time, <laughs> is that they're saying that if you had like four media centers in the house, they could all share the same tuner. Now obviously they can only all use it one at a time. So basically, the box, you plug in an ethernet cable, you plug in a little coax dongle, and then it spits out across one single set of cable cards, but it can actually tune two sets of channels on Right, that? so they're listing at 249, they said it'll be available this year. Uh, right now they didn't have even a prototype yet, it's like a <laughs> development board. Um, but they delivered before, and they make some. I mean, they make some great hardware, so it, it's promising. But whenever you have another entity like Cable Labs involved, right? You know, you, it gets exciting and complicated and painful and drawn right. out. You, you reserve your you try to reserve your excitement for when it, you actually have it in your hands. <laughs> that way, you're less disappointed if it never comes out. <laughs> right. What else is out there? I saw there was like some four and a prototype eight card tuners out there. Seton last CES announced mm -hmm. they were going to have a tuner this year, and now they're saying I think March 31st. Okay. It's going to be 3.99, but it's four tuners, and it's a PCI Express slot. What's cool about it is they managed to fit it into a slimline PCI Express. Nice. Which the cable card itself is almost the size of a slimline PCI Express card. So how they actually got the whole card in there is, is pretty amazing. So you one cable card, four high def streams at the same exact time. So it basically means I can I can record at least four high def streams simultaneously. Right, that's for me and you. But right. for like people who are spend the big bucks on like like media centers, Ace is showing one with eight cable card tuners in it. So two PCI cards, two cable cards. The other thing that's slick is you don't need as many tuning adapters, which mm -hmm. are additional set-top boxes, and you don't need as many cable cards, which are charged per card from the cable company. So it's like <laughs> per card box, or per card per, per month? Per card per month. <laughs> <laughs> what else have you seen at the show that you're excited about? I'm excited about 3D. Really? I really am, yeah. I Last CES, I was real down on it. I mm -hmm. wasn't a big fan. I got a chance to watch uh, college football in 3D and I was blown away. So it was literally the, was it immersive? Did you feel like you're at the game? Yes. I mean, really? And no, they did not throw the football at the TV. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people think of 3D, they think, oh, there's stuff in your face. Nobody wants that, it's a gimmick. Right. Pe what people want is to be immersed in their favorite content. Whether it's a video game, I mean, a first person shooter, people who love those games, they see, first time they see it in 3D, they're like, oh my gosh, you can see how far away that guy is. I mean, it's, it's just an, an added dimension and it's not just about some gimmick like a Disney World right. where there's a butterfly three in front of your face. So you're okay with the 3D glasses and sitting there 
can of suds, your bag of chips, college football, your goggles. Yeah, so I, you know, <laughs> everybody has their gear on for a college football game anyway, or even when you're playing gaming, right? You wear a headset, you got the right. controller. So there's all these accessories to the things we love to do. So the man well, is I, convinced. You're sold. I am. I really am. And when, when people tell me they're not convinced, I'm like, what do you love? What's right. your favorite thing to do on your TV? Experience that in 3D and then come back and tell me that you don't like it. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Drab on GadgetHD.com. Go there. They've got great HDTV coverage from CES 2010. And you know what? We read it all the time here at HD Nation. Coming up next, we've got the new Blu-ray releases for January 12, 2010. And from our beloved Criterion Collection, that staple of film schools and pretentious cinephiles everywhere, a landmark film by any account and possibly Fellini's finest work, Eight and a Half. High Def Disc Digest says the 1080p MPEG-4 transfer of the 63 Surrealist Classic looks as good as any of Criterion's Blu-ray transfers, minus some, quote, edge-ringing artifacts along sharp contrast. I'm thrilled that Criterion kept the original mono soundtrack and added a recreation of the film's original ending for the Blu-ray, albeit from still since Fellini destroyed the original version. I've been waiting months to see The Hurt Locker, Catherine Bigelow's thriller that follows a bomb disposal unit working in Baghdad. It didn't see a wide theatrical release, but everyone I know that's seen it raves about the epic performance by Jeremy Renner and some great cinematography. IMAX Volcanoes of the Deep Sea should pop on any big screen TV. The IMAX team took new lighting technology 12,000 feet below the surface of the ocean to record an extraordinary undersea landscape. The only downside to this IMAX hit is the length, 45 minutes, but since my son will probably watch it 4,000 times, that might be a good thing. Warner Brothers must be listening to me and not Robert Heron. They released The Matrix on Blu-ray without the sequels or the Digibook. You can pick up the gorgeous sci-fi classic for 21 bucks online now. Also coming out this week, The Brothers Bloom, The Burning Plane, Cliffhanger, Fame, Halloween 2, I Can Do Bad All By Myself, In The Loop, Last Action Hero, Moon, Postgrad, The Simpsons, The Complete 20th Season, and White Out. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, GoDaddy.com. Web hosting from GoDaddy.com includes 99.9% .9 uptime, 24-7 support, and free access to GoDaddy's hosting connection. That's the place to install over 30 free applications sure to help you get the most from your hosting plan and website. Use the code HDN14. You're going to get a .biz domain name for only $7.49. And once you've registered that .biz domain, do yourself a favor. Head over to my.biz and enter for a chance to win $25,000. Yes, one lucky Revision 3 viewer with a new .biz domain will win $25,000. The contest ends soon, so don't forget to go to my.biz now to enter. Welcome back, AC Nation at CES 2010. Do you want to talk aesthetics or do you want to talk Blu-ray players mm -hmm. first? How about some aesthetic design choices <laughs> that the companies have made with their latest sets? The, the, the spousal approval factor is going up. They're yes. smaller bezels. Definitely. LG has finally a manufacturer's doing almost 8.3 millimeter, I want to say, mm -hmm. bezel around the edge of the screen, the frame around the active portion of the screen. Most are two, three inches wide. They're offering a panel that literally it's almost invisible. And that for me is finally somebody's right. doing that. Rather than having a big giant black or faux wood grain or, or shiny weird metal, looks like a 1980, you know, insert name of bad car here. Totally. And just a quick mention to the flagship model from LG, they actually now have a new remote control design that I felt it mimics, if you've ever used a Wii, which I'm sure some of you have, they have a controller that actually mimics that kind of control. You have a cursor oh, wow. on the screen that using an RF style Wii control, a very simplified remote. It has, I believe, about five buttons on it for channel up and down volume, but an inner button. And the motion and being able to navigate menus, granted, I don't know how often people really get into their menu systems, but the ease of use was just, it was impressive. Less painful when you're in there is good. And no more mashing a button six times to go through multi layers. You can just move that cursor where you want it and use it. And it was very intuitive. And it also made it fun for some of the built in applications as well. Otherwise, large size screens, they're getting bigger. You mentioned the 73 inch L, or, uh, the Vizio screen. Mm -hmm. Sharp introduced a new 68 inch screen. That'll be their new flagship big size. Wow. And I'm looking off to the side toward Panasonic's booth. They have a 153-inch plasma with quad resolution, quad HD resolution. I believe it's eight eight million pixels. I want to say, that's, or eight. Yeah, that's enough. No, eight thousand. No, that's I, more I, than 4K. It, it is. It's a beyond 4K, and it is. It is awe-inspiring to see something that big. Of course, that's probably like hundred fifty thousand dollars, and you'd have to basically tear it, have to build a house around you say, it. Why but, buy a you know thousand dollar 1080p projector when you can buy something that is yeah. I'm also seeing more brushed metal mm -hmm. as far as frame designs for the televisions as well. And 
it, something simple like that, but I really did appreciate it. What's going on with Blu-ray players? Samsung, like they're inspired. What's going on with the inspired by nature? Blue Energy Ray efficiency. I, I saw a demonstration yesterday where they, they had last year's model and this year's model. These are already very efficient devices. I haven't seen a Blu-ray player in a while that consumes more than 25 watts. Mm -hmm. They went to about 16 watts last year. Now they're down to eight. I'm, how much further can they take this? I mean, they're going to run it on just static electricity or something eventually. I like so that thought. It, you know what it is, and they're also improving load time performance. It's getting better and better. I mean, it's it's noticeably faster this year on the players I looked at on the floor. I was wondering why they can't cache all of the data and like preload it from something on board the the Blu-ray player while you're waiting for the discs to spin up. Yeah, there you go. Well, here's a question. Now, technically, it's not HD. Heron's pretty excited about it. Mobile ATSC is finally getting useful. Yes. The announcements are that by this spring, Washington, D.C. will be the first market to receive what they call ATSC Mobile. It's, a, it's that digital over-the-air standard. They've tweaked it so that you can use it in a mobile environment. Current ATSC, like you would use your digital television reception, you can't move that around. The antenna has to stay fixed. It's prone to things like multi-path interference, where if you have signals bouncing off of buildings and things like that, things can get messed up. Also, if you're moving with an antenna with the current ATSC system, you have Doppler effect that can mess up the signal as well. This helps add layers of error correction that deal with all of that. Vizio announced three portable devices ranging in price uh, up to a 10-inch screen. I believe it's 8-inch to 10-inch, 7-inch to 10-inch screens in under $200. Wow. For, as well as Samsung introduced a mobile phone with support with a single chip ATSC M solution as well. That'll be out hopefully in time for the spring. But currently it's just the Washington DC market will be the test run. Mm -hmm. There is also a question as to if this content there in the spec it says they can lock it in terms of protecting it. It should be free to air. It, it, that's what it my, in my humble opinion. Will it be? We're going to have to wait and see if they decide to was, make it a premium service. I was sitting there and I'm like, who would buy this? And you made the point. It's like, this is the television you carry to the baseball game to watch the baseball game while you're totally. watching the baseball game. One of the top selling TVs on, on Amazon.com right now is a 7-inch portable right. ATSC television. And, you know, if they can make these truly mobile where you can keep it in the car is really where they're looking for. Or you're on the train or whatever, on your mobile device where you're moving around. That's where they want to be able to maintain that signal quality and provide provide free to air, hopefully free to air digital content to your portable device. That would be pretty cool. It's going to be say, neat. I keep seeing the Dolby logo right behind yeah. you. That, that reminds me, Dolby Volume isn't new at this show. They originally announced it like three years ago. First product came out about 18 months ago. But it's, it's a really fascinating... You know, you're watching television, the commercial comes on, your head gets blasted against the bookshelf behind your couch. It's painful, right? Or if you're in a situation like I am when your house is slightly smaller than a matchbox, the volume, right? It's like I have amazing dynamic range, so there's these incredible whispers that I can barely hear. Then the gunshot rings out, and the baby wakes up, and the neighbors wake up. Political but, commercials are the worst. Well, yeah, it's funny to get into that one. And, and this is political. There's like, I think the, the representative from San Mateo has actually introduced a bill in Congress that's mandating that broadcasters, cable and over the air, have to keep the, the commercial levels closer to the, the content levels, which is, I know, something we have to work on at Revision Finagling 3, it. too. But what was interesting is, is, is uh, it's, it's, I never realized what exactly they were doing. So they basically have a, a single chip, an unbelievable piece of processing because it's monitoring multiple areas of bandwidth. It's doing contextual analysis. And then it's actually adjusting and compressing on the fly to try to give you the full without, basically they don't want to compromise the audio quality, exactly. but they want to bring all of the levels down. And it, and it occurs they can't scan ahead like you were normalizing for you know MP3s or something. It's literally doing all on the fly. And it's processing. not just for commercials either. It's for yeah. movies as well. If you're, if you're in that situation, which a lot of us have been in, where you've got that 5.1 set up, yet when the dialogue comes, you're constantly fiddling with the yeah. volume between the explosions are too loud, but the dialogue's too soft. This helps address that. And the other thing really is, is the fact that they're, they're doing this in such a way that, like you mentioned, audiophiles seem to love it. Yeah. Uh, High-end audiophiles, and they're willing to leave it on. And it, it, it's rare to hear, you know, the people who really have the golden ears to go, not you know what? Not when the processing is Ears and audio technology, it is manipulating it, but not so much that it takes away from the original intent. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's showing up in Toshiba TVs. It's showing up in a lot of uh, receivers. Totally. Uh, I guess the Onkyo's got a receiver. It starts about 550 bucks. We're going to try to get that in for testing, get some sampling. We also got a promise out of Dolby that they will take us into one of their prime testing rooms to give us a full demonstration. We can bring any discs we want, get our Dolby True HD on, and basically see if we can actually hear a difference between the 5.1 and the True HD. Time hey, to test our hearing. Oh, my goodness. When we come back, we're going to be talking about set-top boxes. some pretty cool stuff out there from Popcorn which is now Pop Box, and our friends over at Boxy. Right now, though, we got to thank one of our sponsors. Netflix. 
If you're looking for a place to find a great selection of Blu-ray discs, look no further than our next sponsor, Netflix. With Netflix, you can rent over 90,000 titles online, including a ton of Blu-ray titles with free shipping both ways to and from your home. They have over 40 shipping centers now, so almost all deliveries happen in a single business day. Plans start from $4.99 a month. As a new member, you can get a no-risk, two-week free trial membership. Check it out at www.netflix.com slash HDNation. And please remember to type the www when using this code. CS 2010, we're on the show floor here. We gotta take a moment to thank NBC Universal, John Ocarino, they're the folks that made it possible for us to shoot here in the booth. And uh, I also gotta say, the Olympics are coming. They're gonna be in HD, they're gonna look gorgeous. I'm hoping for some fat, mystical moments, like, well, actually, last the Summer Olympics were incredible. Um, NBCOlympics.com is a website to find all of the scheduling. Very cool. Hopefully, they will have more and more available in HD, both online, along with on the, uh, on the cable channels and the broadcast Think they're gonna do channels. anything in 3D? Oh, man. I think they will. I want to see... <laughs> oh, wait, it's Winter Olympics. I want to see, like, half pipe in 3D. I'm surprised. Sports fans seem to think that the 3D is going to make a difference. I saw somebody who watched a football game recently. Right. Ben Draba, who was just like... Loved it. He is, he's somebody who was just like, 3D is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. And he watched a college football game, and he was like, oh, my goodness. This is incredible. Ben and drool. Ben, yeah, Ben Ben doesn't get excited that easy. You, uh, you, you... Yes. Ooh, yeah, actually, well, okay, one of the questions we constantly get is, when is the successor to the Pioneer Kuro going to become? I covet its deep, inky blacks, but of course Pioneer doesn't make the Kuro anymore. No, no. Two companies have been bragging about their plasma black levels at the show here, LG and Panasonic. They both offer something. Uh, infinity black is one term they're using, another one. They're, they're claiming incredible contrast ratios. Mm -hmm. They have very dark rooms they're showing these panels in. They're getting very close, but I don't believe they're there quite yet. I would say they, they look better. They have them side by side with last year's models. They look great, but I think it's going to be, I think 2011 will be when we finally see the successor, the true successor to Kuro technology. And probably at a price most of us can afford. Yeah. So. <laughs> As, as always, don't buy an ACTV now because a better one's coming, just like everything else. And, in a, and a quick mention too about energy efficiency. Energy Star Four has come into effect now. We were dealing with Energy Star Three before, which really required approximately a thirty percent reduction in electrical consumption for these sets in the default mode when you pull it out of the box. Energy Star Four is even more stringent, and every TV I've looked at here on the show floor is conforming to that standard. So yeah, even the plasmas, even the plasmas. And so before anybody tells us buying a plasma is evil, like driving a Hummer, look they're hitting the exact same energy consumption standards as LED, LCD, flat and, panels. And they're getting brighter. However, you know what? They don't test Energy Star with 3D mode, and I guarantee you in that 3D mode. Oh, they will in Energy Star 5 if 3D mode is still around. <laughs> Good deal. <laughs> so, I guess I got time. We've been waiting for the Boxy Box to come out for a while. Yeah. The Boxy Box by D-Link, it's going to be $200 coming in the first half of 2010. It's interesting. I like the remote control, right? It's, it looks like sort of a... a, a, a some, it, it acknowledges the Apple remote control, which was the core of the original Boxy software. Um, you flip it over, it's got the keyboard built in there, so you nice. get your social media on. And right now, if you want to, you can download a beta of the new Boxy interface, which is looking really clean. So we might get that on the show next week if we can get it downloaded. So not the Boxy box, but we are going to get a Boxy box in from D-Link as soon as we can. And 1080p, it's a good, I just, I just, it's the little triangle, I don't know, if, I, I'm always nervous about little triangles, like, because you got to stack it on top of, every, well, little pyramids, you got to stack well, it on top of everything else. That will be at the top of the pile as far oh, as the Boxy box goes. And I got to say, some people, I got, I got like, broadsided by this kid at, at the when I saw the boxy box it's like you people should be talking about this not being an IR device that's evil <laughs> I won't be able to control it with your my, my harmony remote well, first of all take a chill it's RF so you can actually type without having to lean over the keyboard and face it at the IR part that's why it's RF it's actually pretty cool that way nice. two you can plug in a standard USB IR adapter, which are available pretty much everywhere for about two bucks if you search around online, and use it with your Harmony remote if you want to. Once Harmony builds in the software support for that, why well, so. isn't there Bluetooth in all of these devices? Yeah, that would make it, you know, Bluetooth is nice expensive standard. and complicated. Is and it? it? It's slow is sometimes. It? Oh. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, Siabas. You probably don't know that name, but that's yeah. the Popcorn Hour C200. You guys loved that thing. You loved that thing. Pretty popular out there. They're basically like, that was the prototype. We have the real thing now, and it's the Pop Box. It's a 1080p. Uh, they got Netflix in there and a new UI. The new UI looks really good. Info apps they're building, so it's everything Excellent. from like weather and Twitter clients up there. They got Java Flash and QuickTime support. And and uh, it's pretty slick. They're saying it can handle streaming up to 100 megabits per second for 1080p video, which is basically would be live streaming a Blu-ray disc or maybe two Blu-ray discs at once for picture-in-picture. Picture. I have no idea how that's going to work. Um, 
SD card storage, external USB, $129 in March. Not bad. And it's a it's That's a, a good nice, price point. Yeah, it's a small box, but it's really good looking. This I I can't wait to get our hands on that one yeah, because we'll they've done it. a really good job stepping it up with the software design on that one. 129 bucks. That's a killer. And I want to thank them also for putting Revision 3, big fat front and center right there up to the Netflix. Most so that excellent. Was really cool. Um, I had just a couple of quick things. Yeah. With remote controls we were talking about earlier, Vizio also added a slide down QWERTY keyboard for some of their upcoming TVs, the ones that are internet enabled. And what was the other one? Oh, Samsung's flagship TV has a color touchscreen remote yeah. that doubles as a secondary display. I think so you can, the best part of that. Well, you can actually run another channel to that, and I'm thinking people are going to come up with cool hacks for that, maybe maybe security systems or other things enabled too, but the remotes in general, eh, how you control these devices, they're becoming more important, and they're trying to come up with ways of, what if you lose the remote? Because right. some of these TVs, the thin TVs in particular, they really have to minimize the control surfaces mm -hmm. on these. Gesture control, we're seeing second generation gesture control stuff, I was over the Toshiba booth, mm -hmm. they were demonstrating some of that. It's coming along, and I, I think it's not going to be long before you'll be able to do a hand motion in order to control the TV effectively. And then we embed the little thing in your fingertip, and you never have to use a remote control again. Oh, my goodness. Uh, people also want to yell at their TV, too, so. <laughs> With that, you, you don't need any additional hardware to do. There are thousands of vendors here. We're still roaming, finding new products for you. I know we haven't talked a lot about new audio, but outside of, like, people being like, 9.2 is coming, let's not even get into that right now no. um, <laughs> hey one quick follow-up though for blu-ray players something to keep in mind with 3d blu-ray players everyone that owns a current AV receiver that only supports HDMI 1.3 well to do 3d you need HDMI 1.4 so if you just ran that blu-ray player a new 3d blu-ray player into your current AVR and and it would strip out any 3d capability that you would get to the TV so what they're gonna do at least I've seen some demonstrations of it here at the show some players are gonna offer two HDMI outputs one HDMI 1.4 output that goes to your television <laughs> to your 3d television with an HDMI 1.4 cable and an HDMI 1.3 output for audio that goes to your AV receiver your audio video receiver so that you can enjoy those high quality audio formats like Dolby and uh, Dolby True HD and DTS HD and that brings us to our number one question, where do I buy cheap HDMI cables? Of course, monoprice.com and blue Amazon. Com. And we'll go to that.com. Yeah, blah, 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 <laughs> blah. All right, I'm Patrick Norton. Hey, and I'm Robert Herring. Thanks for watching us on HD Nation. We're going to be back next week in the studio. Right now, though, again, we want to thank NBC Universal and the whole crew and say, hey, thanks for watching. Take care.